Hi, I'm Matt Lockett with the Justice House of Prayer in Washington, D.C., and I want to invite you to ponder with us, was last Friday an answer to prayer or not? What am I talking about? Last Friday, President Biden issued a formal apology from the United States government to Native Americans, specifically for the federal government's policy uh, with the Indian boarding schools, the residential schools. Now, if you've been following along with us since 2021, you know that we've been working very intensely in this area, more specifically a broader apology for all of the atrocities and broken treaties and covenants that our federal government made with host nations, peoples, and broke uh, <laughs> all of them, basically. And uh, I want to tell you about a dream that I had when we began that work. And hopefully this dream will kind of set a tone for maybe what we're trying to figure out right now regarding what just happened. We felt led by the Lord to renew efforts for a federal apology towards Native American people. And that's something that had been in the works for almost 20 years, really uh, what began around the year 2003. Uh, we, uh, saw an apology added to an appropriations bill and signed into law by President Obama in December of 2009. That came after many years of an official standalone apology languishing in legislation. Uh, but it was added to an appropriations bill. Those things always pass. And President Obama signed it into law on December 19th, 2009, but instead of it receiving the notoriety that it deserved and what would be appropriate for something as, as sacred as an apology, it was basically stuck in a desk drawer and hidden from public eye. There was no attention drawn to it whatsoever. And so the final state was worse than it began, actually, because really, in, in many ways, particularly among uh, Native American culture, an apology that's given and not recognized is actually worse than an apology that's never given. So that uh, apology kind of just sat for many years and no one really knew what to do with it. And in 2020, we were feeling stirred by the Lord again to renew an effort for an official recognition of the apology. And so in 2021, we began to film a documentary series chronicling the, the story of the apology, but really with the aim of renewing a fresh thrust uh, by the federal government to get them to, to recognize it. And on the night before filming began, I had a prophetic dream that uh, was really mysterious, and, and I want to share it with you. In the dream, I saw Sam Brownback, who was driving a huge dump truck, and it was fully loaded. I think it represents all of the years of work and the apology itself. And he's going down the highway and I come alongside him in another car and I get his attention and to follow me. And so I get in front of him and I lead him uh, on an off ramp onto a side road. And uh, he, I, he began to follow me down this road, but then I noticed that the road was uh, not cared for. It was starting to develop cracks in the road the more that we went. And then all of a sudden the grass was creeping in. Uh, it was completely uh, overtaken by uh, overgrowth and things until finally we have to stop completely because there's trees growing up in the middle of this road. Well, that was the dream. And we discussed it initially and we thought, you know, what is this road? Is this a road to healing? Is it a road to reconciliation? What's, what's stopping the apology from going forward? Well, we kind of held that, that dream uh, gently, uh, waiting for revelation about what it might mean. But then we began to film the series that we called The Apology. And in my interview process with uh, Dr. Nigel Big Pond, he began to describe to me what it was like as a young man growing up in one of the boarding schools. Now, I had never known that he was uh, a part of that. And so I got uh, really interested in wanting to film him at the boarding school where he grew up. And I felt like that was going to be important to document that. And so we actually began to pray after that, the first round of filming 
uh, that God would be, begin to draw attention to the boarding schools, the residential schools. And immediately, almost immediately, it was the following month in May of 2021, that uh, it was announced that um, a grave site, uh, potentially a mass grave site, had been located at one of these residential schools in Canada. Well, that sparked uh, national outrage in Canada, but also we were, we were hearing about this as it exploded in the news here as well, that this grave had been found. And unfortunately, it also sparked a lot of uh, counter-reactionary type of things where uh, 85 churches were vandalized, 24 churches were burned to the ground uh, as a result of the discovery of that. I'll come back more to that later. But uh, we felt like almost in, there was an immediate answer to our prayers that, that there was going to be a tension brought to this boarding school issue. Well, then um, the following month uh, in June of 2021, uh, Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland, the first Native American to ever hold a cabinet position, um, she announced because of that discovery that she was going to launch an investigation in the United States. It was called the Indian, uh, Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative. And they were going to begin to uh, investigate whether or not something similar could be found here in the United States. Well, we felt like all of this, honestly, was an answer to our prayers because we, we felt like God was putting his finger on this issue because it's, a, it's an, uh, really a relatively unknown history. It's not in the history books and uh, hardly anybody knew about this. Well, uh, then we went into the second round of filming and we were able to take Dr. Nigel Bigpon to the Shilako Indian Boarding School where he was raised. And that was a very pivotal moment for me because uh, as we opened the gates, we got permission, uh, tribal permission to uh, film there. And as we opened the gates and went in with him, there was a, about a mile long road that led off the highway and into where this boarding school was located. And this has been gated off and really sealed off for a very long time. And so we began to drive down this road and suddenly I realized I'm in my dream. I was actually on the road that I saw in my dream. The further we went, the more the vegetation and bushes and things were beginning to creep in on the road until finally we got to the point where there were trees growing up in the middle of that road. And I was stunned because I knew that this road to the boarding schools was the road I saw in my dream. I believe that the correct interpretation of my dream is that the apology itself was going to have to stop or maybe stall or pause until we deal with the Indian boarding school issue. So we've made that the central focus of our second episode in the documentary series called The Apology. And then we began to uh, renew very strong efforts to push and try to reach the Biden administration. Uh, we made a good faith effort to uh, promote this with the Department of the Interior and specifically with Deb Holland's office, who is a cabinet member of the Biden administration. Uh, for three years, we have pursued this to no avail. Uh, unfortunately and sadly, we, we, uh, none of our contacts were returned, none of our emails, none of our phone calls, nothing. Uh, but we have tried. Uh, but more important than the, those efforts are that we have continued to pray. I knew that because of my dream, what I saw in my dream, that this issue had to be dealt with deliberately and intentionally before a bigger apology could move forward. So what's just happened is very significant because on Friday, well, let me back up. On Thursday of last week, suddenly and without warning, a press release was put out announcing that President Biden was going to issue an apology for the Indian boarding schools. And that shocked us because uh, we didn't know that was coming. Uh, to my knowledge, nobody that, that we were in contact with, uh, specifically tribal leaders, uh, none of them knew this was coming. And so uh, it came with, without any warning, and he did that the following day. Now, what we had always envisioned for the apology is that 
It would be a solemn occasion. It would be uh, of a contrite spirit and nature. And uh, it's an opportunity to go low. And where an apology is due, that we would go low and, and give an apology as not to say this is the end of it, but this is the beginning. We want relationship and we want to open the door to be able to bring healing and move forward together. That's what the apology is all about. Without an apology, we can't move forward into anything. So what the president did, we, well, we've always envisioned that that would happen in the Rose Garden at the White House. There's no other place really as appropriate as that for a ceremony of that nature to take place. Well, last Friday, the president issued this apology that we've been praying for, but there's a twist. He did not do it in the Rose Garden at the White House. It's not to say that you can't do it somewhere else, but it's specifically where he did it that is problematic. What he chose to do was go to a battleground state a week before the national election. So he went to Arizona and he did this apology with a tribe there in Arizona. Well, I should say that the tribe was present. He gave a 19 minute speech where about five minutes of that were uh, certainly dedicated to highlighting and bring uh, articulation to what the boarding school policy led to, the travesties and the atrocities, the death and the carnage that that brought to host people's uh, families and way of life. Um, but after about five minutes of that, he shifted gears and then it became essentially a campaign stop where he spent the next 15 minutes uh, bragging about his own administration and, and really touting uh, uh, his own accomplishments in an effort, I think, to drum up votes in a battleground state. Obviously, it sounds, you know, like some of my opinion is, is coming through, uh, not even necessarily trying to hide that. But what I've done the last few days is try to connect with tribal leaders and Native American leaders that, that I'm in a relationship with. Uh, through them, I have received responses from uh, tribal chiefs, which is very important. And what I can say is that there is a general sense of disappointment with what happened on Friday, largely because it was connected to a campaign event, which uh, any, any, if you're going to do something like this, it just can't be mired in politics or money. And uh, to do a campaign stop built around it, honestly, is, is quite offensive. Uh, it's offensive to me. I can't even begin to imagine how offensive that would be to our Native American brothers and sisters. But what I'm expressing to you is not just my opinion, but there, from, from tribal leaders, there is a general sense of disappointment. At the same time, there's also an acknowledgement that he did say the words. Um, and I, I want us to, to ponder this moment right now that through this uh, four years of the Biden administration, of the Biden presidency, it began with a, an effort that prophetically, I know God wanted to draw attention to the boarding school issue and that that needed to be dealt with in a decisive and significant way before, I think, a, a broader effort of apology and forgiveness and healing can move forward. And what we see now is that in the four years of this presidency, uh, the boarding school initiative was begun. A two-year investigation was conducted. Uh, the past year, for the most part, was a compilation of the results uh, of that investigation, as well as launching what they called the Road to Healing Tour. The, the language is not lost on me. I think this is all answers to our prayers that, uh, that they would, the, the federal government would launch something called the Road to Healing uh, Tour, where they visited sites uh, throughout the nation where residential schools were located, where that federal uh, policy of boarding schools was uh, implemented, and they listened and recorded the oral history of survivors of that boarding school era. 
And it, there is now an official documentation of the impact of that policy on the lives of our host people. So um, that happened and was concluded in July of this, just this past summer. Then something really unique happened. In the report that was released, eight action items were listed. Now, this isn't from an outside source. This is uh, eight action items recommended by the president's own administration. This is out of the Department of Interior. Eight action items, number one on that list was to issue a formal apology. Now, that's stunning when we know what is on God's heart, God's highlighting it, we're praying it in agreement with his heart, what we know he wants, and then all of a sudden that same language begins to come out in the news and it's coming out in black and white in, in the form of this investigative report. That's stunning to me. I'm very encouraged by that because I know this is the heart of God. Uh, so the number one action item was to issue an apology. Well, that's what just happened last week. Without warning, the president issued that apology. I want to maybe offer this as a perspective. I, I, I'm kind of just doing this as a quick update so that you know, if you've been tracking with us for the last three years, you know we've been engaged in this. And I want you to be up to speed and up to date with the latest that we know of what's happened is that uh, I believe this is an answer to our prayers. Is it the answer? No, I think that uh, God has a perfect will and it gets pushed through imperfect people and uh, imperfect leaders. And, you know, we could sit back and critique it. We could pull it apart and, and highlight everything that was wrong with the way he did it, the tone, the attitude, all of those things. And that would be completely legitimate. Maybe not so much for me, but for my Native American brothers and sisters, for them to uh, have a strong opinion about how this was done. Uh, but I want to offer this as a concluding thought, that God said that this was important. We prayed, we invested our time, our energy, and our treasure into an effort to bring this forward so uh, that the American conscience could be pierced by this truth and now the President of the United States has issued a formal apology. It's a very narrow apology. It's not for all of the, the atrocities of the past. It's a very narrow apology for the federal policy of Indian boarding schools. I have to believe that this is an answer to our prayers and our effort. That, you know, tone aside, protocol aside, everything that maybe is wrong with it, uh, if you take it at face value and just read the words, he has said the words. And I want you to consider that and invite you to please continue to pray. I believe that uh, the language of apology has now been injected into our culture in a way that it hasn't been in the past. And I'm expectant and hopeful that that door is going to widen so that an even bigger apology can now come forth. I still believe that God's going to release that in the Rose Garden at the White House. Certainly it won't be this president. Hopefully it will be the next. And, uh, it, you know, the sooner the better. But we now have the language of apology on behalf of the United States government released and uh, I want us to lay a hold of that. Let's continue to pray. Let's pray uh, that uh, the door widens in the days ahead. And can we please be in prayer and intercession for the host people? Can we pray for a move of God to break out among uh, Native Americans and, and that God would bring uh, healing uh, for ancient wounds, old wounds, what I believe is this nation's original sin. And uh, let's just be expectant and in faith for the days ahead because God has given us this milestone with a huge answer to prayer. And I want us to rejoice uh, in a way that is appropriate for what has just happened. Okay, that's my update. I hope that blesses you. I will see you again soon.